What up, it's your boy Tunnel Vision, and we are back. Yo, Terrence Crawford, he wants that work. Yo, Terrence Crawford wants that work. You know, he let it be known to Canelo that, yo, you know what I'm saying? You want that beef? You want to do that fight? I'm willing to come all the way up to 160 and get that work done. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to show everybody what I'm about. You know what I'm saying? I'm ready to show everybody my cojones. I'm ready to show everybody that I'm about that life. I'm about that life. Nah, no, he's not. <laughs> he don't want to fight Canelo. The only reason that he's screaming about Canelo right now is because they need to promote the um the fight that he has coming on this week that no one's talking about whatsoever. No one's even seen this other dude that he's fighting. No one's even seen this other this dude. I don't know his name. Kalavazanatics. You know, Mean Machine. No one's even seen him do a, a promo. No one has even seen him do a commercial. No one's seen him do an interview. Nothing. We don't know anything about this guy that he's fighting. So what he's trying to do it this week is try to bring as much focus on his fight as he can. That's the game plan. You can't really talk about Earl Spence anymore because Earl Spence got hurt. And Earl Spence not going to be able to fight for a while. So you can't really use that angle. Then he tried to use the angle with the whole PBC thing. Oh, these fighters and this. But that's also kind of fading away and people aren't really paying attention to that anymore. He's not able to hold on to the fans with that viewpoint. So let's go for shock value. Yo, I'm willing, I'm going up to 160. You know, because I can't get these fights and these guys here won't fight and fight me. So I'm going to jump all the way up to 160 pounds and I'm going to and I want Canelo. I'm calling out Canelo. You know, I'm calling out Canelo. It's the same thing. How many used to always call out Floyd Mayweather when he knew he wasn't going to fight him? He knew he wasn't going to fight him. It's the same type of thing. But does he actually want to do it? Is it something that actually he would really entertain? Absolutely not. There's no way in hell he's going up to 160 pounds to face anybody. Not to mention, if you were to go up to 160 pounds, you're in the same situations. You know, the zone. Canelo Alvarez, he fights with the zone. Um, and with Golden Boy. Uh, what's the other guy? Uh, Demetrius Andres. He's with the zone. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the other champion is with the, is with PBC. And Jamel Charlo. The IBF champion, Galani Golovkin, with the zone. You know what I'm saying? Your promoter would still have to work with other people, and you still would, have, would not be able to fight on ESPN. You're the B-side in all those situations. You'd still have to go to another network. In order for them, any of anybody to come to your network, you'd have to put up a ish load of money, which your promoter's not willing to do against guys that you can actually beat. So what exactly would change? It'd be the same type of situation. Exact same type of situation. So I don't see it happening whatsoever. He's just talking. All he's trying to do is he's trying to get this, um, he's trying to get shock value and he's trying to bring people to his fight. So that's all it is. It's just shock value. You know what I mean? And bringing people towards his fight, you know, getting people interested in his fight. I don't know, man. This guy's going to have to make some kind of moves um, if he wants to get what he wants as far as legacy, as far as big fights. And um, this is just not going to cut it. You know what I mean? Just shock value stuff is not, that's not going to work. You continuously talking about other people, quote, don't want to fight you when your promoter himself has said that. He's not going to pay for the fighters to come, you know what I'm saying, to fight you. The only person he's going to try to invest in, the only fight he's going to try to invest in is the Earl Spence fight. When he makes talks like that, it's kind of it's getting to the point where it's getting old. And people don't want to hear it anymore. People just want to see you fight. People are not trying to hear about, you know, how, you know, these people don't want to fight you and this and that. They want to see you fight. And if you're not fighting the top-tier competition, people are not going to pay attention to whoever you're um, fighting or they're not going to pay attention to your events. They're not. You know what I'm saying? When you're having an event and most of the hype is for a fight that's happening before yours, for the undercard fight, that's a problem. Everybody's looking towards forward to watching Comey versus Teofimo Lopez. That's a fight that everybody's looking forward to. That's a fight where the winner of that fight, there's big things ahead. We know there's a unification with Lomachenko where we're looking at, you know what I'm saying, a lot, multiple three belts on the line. Does he have? Yeah. Yeah, we're looking at three belts in the line. That's a big fight that's coming up. Something to look forward to. You know what I'm saying? In the future. So we people want to see it, want to see that. No one cares about this mean machine fight. And the thing out and thing with that is also that Bob Arum's already said that Terrence Crawford in his next fight, he's fighting in South Africa. 
that's what they're looking at because top rank has this weird thing where they're putting all the fighters are fighting um overseas for some weird reason lomachenko's fighting overseas supposed to be fighting australia i don't know what happened with that i guess with all the backlash with the franchise belt they kind of chill off that but he um uh, Ramirez, don't even know he has a fight. He has a fight set up with Victor Posto, and he's fighting in China. Why he's not doing a unification with uh, Taylor for Undisputed, I don't know. No one talks about that, though. You know, Better Beef, I don't even know who he's fighting yet. He should be fighting Bevo next for unification. But no one talks about that, though. When it comes to top rank, hey, they can just do whatever they want. People just sit back and say nothing. When Ramirez, the other Ramirez was a champion at 160 pounds, 68 pounds, no one is pushing him to fight the other champions that were on PBC and Plant and in Benavides. You know, when they had the 126 pound champion, no one was pushing him to do anything. And I, even with uh, Shakur Stevenson, I think he's supposed to be moving. Um, he's supposed to be maybe doing unification. In, uh, in the UK, but it looks like that fight might not happen. So, I don't know. Fight Gary Russell. But, you know, the whole Canelo thing, is he serious about that? No. If he was serious about moving up and getting belts, um, what he would have done was he would have moved to 154 pounds and he would have a challenge for the 154 pound belt. And that would have been a uh, smart thing to do when Jaime Mugia had it because Jaime Mugia has some sort of name and he's a WBO champion. So he could have been in a situation where he could have moved up and the WBO would have made him the automatic challenger and made him um, Jaime Mugia's mandatory. I believe it's some guy named Patrick Tescara or something like that. Texera has the belt right now. So if he wanted to move up and get a belt, he could do something like that. He could fight someone like that. He could force a, 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 a mandatory. And as um, long as they win the purse bid, because I think that guy might fight on the zone. If he, you know, if, you know, he forces a mandatory, you know, win that purse bid or whatever, make a deal, put him on ESPN and fight for a 154 pound belt. That's something that he could do. And that's what actually what I was saying that he should have done since he can't get any of these other fights. You know, talk all this crap about Floyd Mayweather. Oh, you know, I don't want to dance around with my jewels and my money. Well, do what Floyd Mayweather did in the ring. Floyd Mayweather moved up to the point where he was fighting at his walk around weight. So Floyd Mayweather went Freitas, Casamayor, um, Prince Nasid. All these guys didn't want to fight him. When Ricky Hatton didn't want to fight him. When Casa Zul didn't want to fight him. And all these guys wouldn't fight him. He said, F it. He kept moving up in weight and taking on the killers that no one else wanted to face. You know, you could do that. Be Floyd Mayweather in the ring. Actually, go up to 160. That's something if Floyd Mayweather was your size, he would have done. And he couldn't get the fights at a lower weight class, that what he would have been done. It would be the same thing as you moving up to the 154 pounds and taking on a, a taking on a, what do you call it, a, um, a Jaime Munguia. Then taking short money, because Floyd Mayweather used to always take short money just so he could get fights. He's had, to, he had, it's early in his career, those times where he went and fought for four or $5,000 because all they had left in the budget is like, man, give me that money. Set up the fight just so he can get, so he can get the fights in. You know, make the sacrifice. Go ahead and go, you know, tell him like, yo, nah, man, I know Charlo fight me. I know J-Rock will fight me. I'll take, give me, give me two mil. As long as they give me two, three mil, let me go over there and fight them. You could do something like that. Or you can go to 60 and to be like, yo, Bob, let me go to the zone. Let me do my thing over there in the zone. I want Demetrius Andres next. He's a WBO champion. I'm a WBO champion. Let's force this what's it called mandatory. And I'm going to go up and I'm going to face him. That's what Floyd did. People talk all this crap about Floyd. Floyd was taking on champions, top three, top four, pound for pound. You know what I'm saying? Top fighters, top seven coming off the biggest wins, fighting at, 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 and above his walk around weight. Weighing in 150 pounds for 154 pound bouts. You know, the day of 147 bouts, sitting there drinking water and everything, while the other dudes all there just looking miserable in the, in the pre weigh in. What's it? In the pre weigh ins. Looking mizzy. And he said, oh man, you looking bad, dude. Look at that, because he didn't have to cut. And he woke up in the morning, he's 145 pounds. You know, so he can drink some water before before the weigh in. He knows he's good. Walk around weight. Yeah, I talk a little something about Floyd, about, oh, you want to talk about the flashy stuff, whatever? Yeah, call him in that, you know, uh, pussy cat and all that stuff. Yeah, try try doing in the ring what he did in the ring. See how that works out for any one of y'all. Go fight at your walk around weight. When you, you're all season weight, go fight at that weight. Fight at your walk around weight. Let's see how that turns out for you. Like, subscribe, share. Crawford, like 50 Cent said, man. You got to do something, baby.